Good morning, and get out of my face with your stupid Angel Reese takes. Thank you. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it back. Run it up. Yes, yes, yes. This is Run It Back. Happy Monday morning. Yeah, yeah. The all black edition of the show. Well done, guys, on our t-shirts. We really kicked it on that one. Uh, six days. That's it. Six days left in the regular season. And we will start out with some very, very bad news for me. Uh, the Lakers are doing everything I said they wouldn't do. Uh, they beat the Rockets yesterday, 134-109. Anthony Davis with 40. LeBron with a triple-double. Hachimura had 20 and 12. The bench, oh, the bench had 50. Um, and if you take a look at the standings right now out in the West, oh my goodness, five through eight all have the same number of losses at 38. So the tiebreakers involved are many. Uh, and the whole thing is nobody wants to play well, they don't want the five seed because you play the Suns. And as Eddie know, the Suns are on quite the tear right now. So Chandler, if you're in this group, this lumpy group down here, how do you navigate the last six days of this season? I mean, you, you win as many games as possible. You try and control your own destiny. And the Lakers have done just that. When you really look at what they've done, it really is a remarkable turnaround from <laughs> them becoming a bit the laughing stock, not working, everything negative. Westbrook doesn't fit to them making that move at the trade deadline, getting Anthony Davis healthy, getting LeBron James healthy, and now they look for real. And you gotta give credit to Palenka, you gotta give credit to the front office, because that that did something to them, and they've developed their players. They Austin Reeves has been unbelievable for them. They got deeper, they got younger, they got shooting, and, and they made a leap. And to sit here and say, are they a contender? They're, they're not a contender, but they gave themselves hope this year they gave lebron james something to be excited about and they put themselves in a situation to possibly not even be in the plan so it, it really is crazy the how up and down their season has gone the fact that they could just get in as a six seed and, and play sacramento and possibly advance is beyond me to me it's anthony davis the way he's playing 37 points or more in four of the last five games they're 9-0 all time since getting him when he scores 40 points or more. When he's dominant, this team has shown, going back to the first year they had him, when they won the championship in the bubble, he was arguably the best player on the team. LeBron James won finals MVP, but anyone that saw those games knew that they weren't going to win a championship unless AD was, was playing at this elite level. And then he has the injury uh, prone 20, 20, 20, 21 season, and it's been injuries ever since. And even this year, he dealt with a stress injury and then he comes back and now he's starting to regain form. I think there's only one more back to back to end the season. We'll see if he plays in that. But right now the Lakers, like Chandler said, they put, put themselves in a position where they have a chance. Uh, I don't know how far they can go, but they've given themselves a, a real chance in these Western Conference playoffs. And if you're them, you probably want to see the Clippers fall out of, of, the, of the playoff spots. Um, try to get the six seed, play the Sacramento Kings. You don't want to get the five seed and play the Suns. That's a that's a horrible first round matchup for any team. You hope the Warriors can get to that five and you can somehow sneak in there at six and play the Kings with your veteran experience going up against Sacramento. But to me, this all revolves around Anthony Davis and him staying healthy. All right, you heard that, Eddie. It all revolves around AD. The big question is, do you trust AD to carry this team through the playoffs? I do. I mean, he's averaging 28 and 12 since the All-Star game, 59% from floor. And there's been times in this stretch he's looked like the best player in the world, or one of them. And that we've always known that's what his peak is, that's what his capability was. He just had to stay healthy. He suffered a freak injury earlier in the season, like turn his ankle midair. It, it, it's like, how does that happen? Ah, weird. Um, but, but he's been absolutely amazing when he's had him on the floor. There was a point in November, a stretch before he got hurt again, unfortunately. Same thing, looked like he could be the best player in the league if he had that, that, that leeway to do so. And now LeBron is back, and then this, you're starting to look at this team and say, what could they possibly be? But I have no, no issues with Anthony Davis at all. If he remains healthy, and I know that's always a question mark, but if he remains healthy, nobody in the Western Conference can really handle him. And everything that the Lakers will do successful will trickle from there, and it's, it's a little scary at this point. Yeah, I agree. And if you're the Lakers, you have to trust him, right? That they're 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 only going to go as far as he takes them. And like everyone's talking about right now, he has been dominant and he's shown flashes all season long when he is 100% that he still is a top 5, top 10 player in the NBA. So, 
Yeah, and as much as they're trying to, you know, get to that six seed and play Sacramento, this team fully healthy, it's not an easy out for anybody. And yeah, you can look at and, and you can go from, you know, making it and being excited to be out of the play in and play Phoenix. But if you do draw Sacramento in the first round of the Lakers, you go from just being happy to getting in to, to thinking you're winning that series. So it's just, it's, again, it's a huge turnaround. And with Anthony Davis playing like this and their bench giving them what they gave yesterday, and they have all these younger guys and they're shooting the ball, moving, they're having fun. You know, it, it really is an exciting, interesting team, but it all starts with Anthony Davis. And, and I do trust him. And if he's healthy, he is unbelievable. Despite the Kings losing to my Spurs yesterday, I do not appreciate the Kings slander. And I do think at some point it has to stop until we see what they can do in these playoffs. LeBron had a lot to say about the chemistry of this team and where they're going. And then he said, we just want to put ourselves in a position to be able to compete for a championship. I like what we've been building over the last month or so. You've already talked a little bit about it, Chandler, as far as they won't. But let's be real. Weirder things have happened. If things fall correctly for the Lakers, can they make a championship run? Yeah, weirder things have definitely happened. And it's it's all you got to do is get hot for a couple months and you can take off. And this team has the talent. This team has the experience. If LeBron James continues to play at that level, if Anthony Davis is playing that level, if they're healthy, anything can happen. What they, they go, they get the Kings, and then they get Denver in the second round or Memphis. I could see that being a series. I wouldn't just help the Lakers out of that. But one step at a time, continue to... Control your own destiny. Win these next four games. Win as much as you want or win at least the next two and put yourself in that situation to be able to rest players to possibly lose to get that six seed instead of the five seed if that is their plan and that's who they want to face. So, again, they've done such a good job getting to this point to now it's like they're pretty much a lock, right? Like they're in, they're, they're in the playoffs at this point, which is crazy. Yeah, like more than any season I can remember in recent memory, it feels like seeding is going to matter a lot. Like if the Lakers have to go through the Warriors, then the Suns, then the Nuggets, that's a little different. And it changes what you think their chances are. But if they're playing the Kings and then the Grizzlies and then I guess the Clippers on the other side of the bracket, now it starts to look a little more enticing. Now it starts to look a little more possible. What I will say is this, they have all they need. Like let's not get to excuses later if they lose. They have a, a solid contending team. They have a bevy of guards and ball handlers which they've been wanting since they got lebron and, and then added anthony davis they wanted playmaking assistance and they had that with dennis schroeder with d'angelo russell and 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 obviously with lebron and, and now anthony uh, austin reeves who is apparently a megastar and gets a jordan whistle every single every time you watch him play but they have what they need they have a, a diverse set of bigs that can help them out they have guys who are defending they have lebron back healthy looking like lebron and they have Anthony Davis, who can absolutely propel you through playoff series. So they have what they need. Now, if they see the Warriors and then the Suns and then, and then whatever, it gets a little tricky. And I don't think they're better than either one of those teams. But can they make a championship run? I think they can. And it's pretty scary considering where they were in November when we were saying, blow it up. It's not working. Everybody hates each other. Or even just February when Russell Westbrook was telling everybody to have fun, even if they lose. And LeBron was like out of his mind hearing that. So to do all that in two months, not even really two months, in six weeks or so, that's impressive. And, and they control their own destiny from here on out. So they can be the five seed. They just have to win out. But they play the Suns. They play the Clippers. It's, it's a lot. And we're going to find out a lot about them this week. Yeah, I'm not ready. I'm, you guys are very positive. I'm not ready to go all the way positive on this one yet. Here's the thing. The Lakers have done everything they're supposed to do, and the Dallas Mavericks have just looked like garbage since this entire thing went down. The, the Hawks beating them 132-130 in overtime. Look, Kyrie and Luka played 43 minutes. Kyrie had 41-5-4. and four. Luka finished with 22 points, but he did have zero points in overtime, and they gave up 70 first-half points. There's also a foul on Kyrie at the end of overtime. I guess, let's start there. <laughs> there you go. You can see the after effects of that. You agree with the foul that was called Chandler? Uh, I mean, it is a foul, right? Like he's definitely run into him, he sells it a little bit. I, I hate that a game, especially in overtime, ends this way. But yeah, that's like that that that's a that's definitely a foul. It's just it's it's kind of weak to let the game be controlled by this and he definitely sells it, definitely flops, and that pretty much was the game, but Again, not one play makes makes a loss or, or makes a win, but this was 
this was basically it. That, that's a tough break at the end of the game. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a foul. It's a, it's an unfortunate foul. I, I don't know if Kyrie's trying to shoot the gap and chase his guy or, or he was gambling for a steal. I've seen him do both before, so it's both possible. But he just got caught in a tough, in a tough spot. What's even worse about this is the Mavericks had about three chances to win the game at the end of regulation. Uh, Christian Wood missed a free throw. JaVale McGee missed a free throw as well. And then JaVale McGee put, made a free throw to send it to overtime. Both of these teams were dying to lose this game and just, just trying their hardest. But fortunately for the Hawks, they were on the right side of their, their mid uh, marathon that they're on right now. And so since they had lost their last game, they're trying to win another game and stay 500. And of course they did. But yeah, it, it's a foul. It's an unfortunate foul. Uh, Luca actually got a good shot on the other side of the court. What I am surprised about though, is with Kyrie scorching in the way he was and Luca struggling in the way he was, that it was just an outright pass to the corner for Luca to throw up a heave. Uh, maybe get the ball to Kyrie in that situation. But look, it's over. Th this season is over. Just punt it, just move on Mavericks. Oh. It's, the damage is done. Oh, it, yes, we'll talk about that, too, because they have to look a little bit into the future on that. But Dallas has lost six of their last seven. Uh, they do have their last three games all at home against Kings, Bulls, and Spurs, Shams. As far as the mindset of this team heading into these final three games, we won't go in the offseason yet. That's coming. But what is it going into the last three games? Well, I think the Mavericks have to seriously look at whether you shut down Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving these last three games, maybe two games of the regular season, this is a team uh, that is one game out of the play-in behind Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City, I believe, has the tiebreaker over them. So they're, in, they're essentially two games out of the play-in with just three, you know, four games left. So you have to see what happens with Utah, what happens with Oklahoma City between now and Wednesday. The Mavs don't play again until Wednesday at home against the Kings. I'm told that the organization is seriously considering the possibility of shutting down those three guys. They have a top 10 protected pick. So being out of the play-in race, it behooves them not to try to keep their pick and at that point, you have the flexibility of having that potentially top 10 pick. You have three first round picks that you can trade this off season to go get a, a, a star and potentially more players in the marketplace. They're gonna be one of the more active teams. So you go get Kyrie Irving, who's playing at an elite level. You try to go get him, Luka Doncic, some help. Uh, and you have two guys in, in Luka and Kyrie that have been playing through stuff. Luka's dealing with a thigh injury. Kyrie's been playing through plantar fasciitis. So, uh, they clearly need more depth on this team. Um, you know, Kyrie Irving, even though he's played at an elite level most of his time in Dallas, he just has not clicked so far for this Mavs team as a unit. Um, and I think you're going to start looking at them over the next few days, look into what exactly they want to prioritize going into the offseason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's it's devastating the, the kind of the run that they're on right now, and it's the exact opposite of what happened for the Lakers has happened for the Mavs. They they mix things up, they make a big trade, they bring in Kyrie Irving, and it has just been bad. They've gotten even worse defensively. They don't have depth. They still lack size. Their big guys don't give them a lot of production. Um, and this doesn't all fall on on Kyrie Irving. They have to find a way to re-sign him. They gave they gave up way too much to not. But I, I'm also, I, I can't just shut down these guys right now. I, I see what happens before Wednesday, before they play next. You know you're a better team than Oklahoma City. You know you can hang with them, New Orleans, Minnesota, in a play-in. You have the talent. If I'm them, I ride out this season. I don't care about the pick yet. I think I have enough talent with these two guys that if I just get into the playoffs, anything can happen. And, and they've dug themselves a huge hole. But I can't, with those two guys on my team, just shut them down when there's still even a glimmer of hope. I'm just riding out. You're about to have five, six months off. Riding <laughs> out happens. But, man, this has been a fall from grace. All year long, we're talking about the Lakers and how bad, and they're not going to make the playoffs. And the Mavs were a lock. And now the last month, they have just completely smoked it. They're dealing with injuries. They're dealing with chemistry, getting guys, you know, comfortable with each other. But... This has been a brutal stretch and absolutely devastating. And it'll be even more devastating if they don't resign Kyrie Irving. See, I find that to be very interesting because you and Shams have both now alluded to the fact that they're just going to sign Kyrie and, and keep this thing rolling, Eddie. I, I don't know. Do you run it back with both Kyrie and Luca, or do you try to change this thing? I mean, I think technically they almost have to as far as their cap situation goes and and if they don't use that money on him, they it's not like they can spend it elsewhere in the summer. They, they, I guess they could do a sign and trade of sorts, but 
then you run into that situation where what is the market for Kyrie? Can you trade Kyrie for $40 million of stuff coming back? <laughs> I, I don't know that that's true. I think the trade deadline told us it's kind of iffy and and things have gotten worse since then. Not even with Kyrie, he's actually played fine, but there's just that marker of like, what does he do for us? And I think right. Kyrie's a great player and I think he played tremendous. I think it was ridiculous last night. He hit a clutch shot late, that layup we just showed. and. He can be valuable to the right team, but I feel like there's going to be a lot of teams sitting there going, I don't think we're the right team. So, yes, in some senses, Dallas is essentially stuck, and then it turns into what do they do around those two players from there. Uh, it's been tough. They've lost seven of their last eight games. They've been awful defensively. They gave up 129 points to the lowest-scoring team in the league the other day, uh, a team where Jimmy Butler may or may not be trying uh, it's 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 a lot, and they just continue to have these issues. And on top of that, like, yo, the morale on that team, like the quotes that are coming out of some of these scrums are just, like, those guys are ready for vacation. I'm with Chandler. They should not shut everybody down. But I'm not going to be shocked when Sham sends out the tweet and tells us, yeah, it's it's time. Kyrie and Luca are going home and uh, enjoy these rest of these three games, Mass fans. Oh, God. Shams. You're sitting yeah, there like, I mean, mm -hmm, what, mm -hmm, when it, mm -hmm. what, when it comes to Kyrie Irving, they gave up two starters, a first round draft pick, and they gave up multiple second round picks for him. So like Chandler said, to, to not bring him back, I think would be so much more devastating for that organization than bringing him back. I think the feeling that you would have if, you, if Kyrie Irving walks, let's say to a Phoenix or to a Clippers or another organization, and you don't get anything back for him, there's no such thing for the Mavericks as, Let's see how life is with no Kyrie Irving and let's see if this team is better. Because at that point, you literally reach rock bottom and then you're looking at Luka Do Like you literally have to look into rebuilding because there's no way to maximize that roster hold and that money from a financial perspective. So um, I, I still believe the Mavericks first and foremost priority this offseason is bringing back Kyrie Irving on a deal. And then from there, you have three first round picks, you have salaries. To go out in the marketplace, whether you want to go get a star player, whether you want to get other, uh, you know, rotation type of guys, they clearly need bodies in the front court, on the wing. So you have to try to rebuild this team around those two guys and figure out what kind of talent you can get in here. Luka Doncic is still under contract with a player option through 2026. So it's not like they're, they're oh, here with, with kind of the time running out on Luka Doncic. It feels to me like, and look, by the way, I preface all of this by saying these are two amazing players in the league, but that doesn't always work. Just because you put them together, that's not the right formula. It feels like this maybe was a mistake, but now we're going to double down on this mistake because you feel like you can't do anything else. So it's a, it's almost depressing if you're a Mavs fan, but Jason Kidd, Mark Cuban, especially Mark Cuban right now, because we know how competitive he is about his team. How much pressure Chandler is going on in that front office? And to be a fly on the wall, I would also like to add, because again, Jalen Brunson would have signed for four years, $55 million. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. How much pressure do you think they're putting on themselves? There's a lot of pressure, and it definitely hasn't <laughs> gone, obviously, the way that they expected it. They thought this was going to turn around. They were so excited. They thought this made them one of the best teams in the conference, if not the league, and it just hasn't, and it hasn't worked. And again, it's not Kyrie Irving. It's not Luka Doncic. Collectively, this team's just not working. They don't have defense. They don't have toughness. They need. They have so many holes where the talent of Luka and Kyrie is not even able to carry them. And like we just touched on, a, you have to resign him. If they don't, and this is just a three-month rental and you gave away two starters and all those picks, it's one of the worst trades ever if they don't resign him. So I don't care if it if it's not if it hasn't gone as planned. I don't care if it if you're gonna not make the playoffs. You have two generational talents, and that's attractive to free agents this summer. That's attractive to guys wanting to make a move and come join those two guys. And it, it, they're they're gonna forget about this month. They're gonna forget. Come this summer, one of the uh, they sign a third guy. We're then talking about how good the Mavs are next year, and they can't be that without re-signing Kyrie Irving and losing all that stuff. So, this it hasn't gone as it hasn't gone as planned. But yeah, they have to double down. They have to re-sign him, or this is brutal.
Wow, what a, what a weird circumstance to have put themselves in. Let's move to the Eastern Conference, boys. Wizards, Knicks. Don't look now, Eddie. The Knicks clinch a playoff berth. Burr, 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 burr. Beating the Wizards 118-109. Four players with 20-plus points. But over the weekend, there was some bad news uh, in losing Julius Randle with an ankle injury. Shams, we're going to start with you there. Update on his time frame. Yeah, so Julius Randle is out for the rest of the regular season. So that's the rest of this week going into the weekend. And the expectation is he's going to be reevaluated mid next week. So right before the start of the playoffs. And you hope with that type of ankle sprain that he's going to be able to come back to at least start the playoffs. But obviously, given that he's going to be reevaluated with that sprain right before, it's not a given. It's a tough loss, but they've still won without him over the last few games. And with Jalen Brunson leading the way, this is a team that can still compete at a pretty high level. Yeah, they've won, won four in a row uh, so far. With I know a few of those are without him. But Chandler, as far as being competitive in the playoffs without Julius Randle, looks like they're going to play Cleveland. What are your predictions? Yeah, listen, they're, like like Shams just said, they're going to compete. They're going to play hard. They still have great guys. You're getting 21 from Obi Toppin last night filling in. They're still managing to, and finding ways to win games. I think regardless, with or without Julius Randle, it's not just going to be a cakewalk for the Cavs. This team is tough. This team plays defense. Jalen Brunson is a lot to handle. It hurts big time not having Julius Randle and not having that threat and that weapon out there. Um, and I think either way, it's going to be a great series. But I, I don't, I don't think they have enough with or without Julius Randle to you know survive and advance and get past Cleveland. Hmm. Eduardo. Yeah, I'm with Chandler. I'm with Chandler. I don't think that was a series they were winning anyway, but they absolutely need Julius to be competitive in that series. I, they, they just need some secondary scoring. Shout out to Obi Toppin for last night. That's not going to happen with Evan Mobley and Jared Allen following him around the court. It's going to be just a little bit different. And they were talking about the best defense of the league statistically, but they're also a really great defense functionally when you watch them and you watch the ground that their front court is able to cover. That's a huge testament to those two guys too because they're often playing with two really small not defensive guards at all. And then that, that small forward situation has been in flux all season long. So yes, they need Julius Randle. And as somebody who just watched an ankle sprain and watched it mm -hmm. kind of materialize over about three weeks, uh, it's going to be tough for me to see him playing that first weekend. I could see him gutting it out, obviously, and just saying, hey, I'm going to play in pain and I'm going to deal with it because it's the playoffs. But still, there's going to be a little bit of swelling. There's going to be a little bit of soreness. There's going to be a lot of work happening on that ankle still. So it is going to it is going to be tough to get him on the court. And even when he does, we're not going to look at it at the same burst and explosiveness immediately. But ankle strains heal. And if they push that series longer and longer, then they have a chance. I feel like you guys didn't see Obi Toppin's post-game outfit. I feel like there would have been a lot more respect thrown on uh, oh, on the Knicks. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, we were talking about Obi Toppin's outfit after the game. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, collective bargaining agreement time. And thank goodness we have Shams to make us smarter on all of it. When Run It Back returns. Run it over. Run it back. Yeah, Run it over. Run it back. Welcome back to Run It Back Shams. You were busy over the weekend. A lot of serious stuff going on with the collective bargaining agreement. It's kind of nice to see things being agreed on. Can you, I would say, can you update us? But this whole segment's going to be about this. So where do you want to start? Yeah, I mean, I think we can start with kind of the, the rule for kind of curbing load management. When you think about, we talked about it a few weeks ago, the possibility of, of getting games played minimum when it comes to trying to get awards all NBA teams, so 65 games or more players have to play moving forward once this collective bargaining agreement kicks in next season in order to be eligible for all the major league awards to be able to get on the all NBA team. And the all NBA team, I'm told now, will also be positionless. So you won't have to deal with centers and forwards and guards and Joel Embiid uh, not getting on the first team because Nikola Jokic made it. It's going to be the 15 best players now moving forward. Um, and I think there will be conditions as well put in there if a player suffers a catastrophic injury or if a player in a team, some, you know, if there's, if there's a shutdown of a player and they're at game 63, I think there's going to be conditions in there to protect guys as well. But 65 games, and I'm curious from Chandler's perspective, do you think this impacts guys? Will this impact guys' mentality going into the season? I mean, it's roughly what? You get to miss 20% of the season, give or take, Chandler. So what do you think? 65 games as a threshold? Will this work? I, I like it just because it takes out any question or doubt whether this person qualifies or not. So like like right now, if, if 
Embiid and these guys that are in the race right now, they have to reach that threshold to even be considered. So just to me, it takes out any any gray area where, oh, well, this guy played more games, but there's still going to be an opportunity where, let's say Joel played 66 this year and Jokic played 74. Are we going to knock him for those Ooh. games? Like the difference of the difference. So there's still going to be issues with it, but I do like it just because it, it eliminates any question or doubt of, of you know, be even allowed to get it. I think this is tricky because now we're going to see a lot of 65, 66, 67 <laughs> game seasons. Why not? We literally just saw Damian Lillard get to 58, the game where he qualifies to be in the leading scorers in the league and say, all right, I'm done. Sorry, guys. And release a couple of nice press releases about it. This now puts a cap, I think, the other way. If we're going to load manage, now we can say as a team, Okay, let's get his 65. Let's figure out his schedule for that. Or we get to the 65, and we're just talking about one team shutting down. We're thinking about other teams shutting down. We're going to see a lot of guys hovering around 65 games. And so I think it's going to have that reverse effect. Do I think it's cool to incentivize playing more games? Yeah, I just think some ideas work different in practice than they do in theory. But you do have a situation like this season where it looks like Jaron Jackson is going to win Defensive Player of the Year. And he would not have if this rule was in place. And so, yes, it's going to work in some sense, but it's going to be a lot of haggling. And with Sham saying there's a little bit of gray area, that scares me too because I can't wait till we have the first controversy where the guy goes, hey, I only played 61 games, but I actually got hurt, so now I need to make first team so I can get my super max and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and we just have to talk about it for three weeks. And the NBA goes, yeah, whatever. Screw the rule. And so it's happening. It's coming. I know it. And uh, yeah, you know, sometimes you rub the genie, you ask for a wish and it goes all out of whack. And I think that we might get that a little bit here. No, I love that the evolution is happening, right? Like, cause we, this is the thing. It's never going to be perfect, but I'm pretty sure Eddie's scenario will happen next season, right? That's, it's going to be right away. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I feel like it's having but what's Chandler. All, what's the, also, oh, what's also gonna what's gonna happen when someone like Giannis in the All Star game just checks in and then gets right out in, in one possession, mm. you know, and gets yep. out? <laughs> well, some people will whine. You know what I mean? If I'm at 64 games and I'm an MVP or I need to qualify, I'm just gonna do what Giannis just did in the All Star game. I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna get my 65, my 65th game, and I'm out. So there's still gonna be controversy with it. Well, yeah, so there's always going to be did like, it last trying to year. figure it out. I, 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 I would Drew do Holl- it if I – go ahead. I was just saying, Drew Holiday did it last year for like 800K or something. Watched <laughs> the tip off, fouled a guy. Cool, we're out of there. We got enough games. And we're absolutely going to see that happen. Do Please believe it. But, yes, we would all do the exact same thing. That's what those incentivized clauses are for. I think they're – Amazing and good for you if you can get them. Um, but as far as the positionlessness of the league moving forward, this has been such a topic when even when just as fans, we're trying to figure out how to vote Chandler. Do you like it? Do you think this is a big good step for the league moving forward? Yes, it, it makes the most. Can you imagine if Embiid and Jokic, only one of them could be first team all NBA this year mm-hmm. like that? Or one of them could start in the all-star game or, you know, Jason Tatum. Yeah didn't start because because Giannis and KD and these other guys but like Donovan Mitchell got in but the, you know, I like the five best players I think when I look at all NBA I'm looking at the five the 15 top guys that had the best season I shouldn't be knocked if you know the small forward this year is the deepest position and you know a two guard that has had not even close to good as year as I have they get the award just because position so I think they figured it out here I think they should do it for the all-star game as well uh but this makes the most sense yeah, I, I love this. I'm glad this one got done. Shams, let's talk a little salary cap. And Chandler, I know you're going to want to chime in on this. So new rules that affect the salary cap moving forward are what? Well, it's basically even more difficult now. If you're an upper spending team, when you talk about the Clippers, you talk about um, the Nets, the Warriors, it's more difficult to make trades, spend at a high level. You can't use your taxpayer mid-level if you reach the second apron of the tax. And even in trades, you, it, it's harder to conduct trades. It's harder to trade picks. Um, it, it, overall, it's good. It's really what one person told me. It's really big owners versus small uh, versus smaller owners. And so I think certainly teams got their wish. You're going to get more parity. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for those upper spending teams. Um, but I do think for the players, they opened up hundreds of millions. When you think about uh, money that wasn't there, untapped money, team players being able to invest in teams. 
NBA teams, WNBA teams, um, the, the mid-level exception money is going to be going up, room exception is going to be going up, um, and there will be a minimum threshold that all these teams have to hit on anyway. So you're not going to run into those problems, I think, as frequently as we have in the past where teams just elect not to spend. I think in the next CBA, there's going to be written uh, stuff in there that teams have to spend the money up, up, up until, I believe, the 90% minimum. So um, overall, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult for those upper teams that are spending all this money, Steve Ballmer, Joe Sy, Joe Lake, of that are just spending money at, at ridiculous amounts to be able to retain guys, especially at the mid-level type money. You like yeah, it, Jalen? It evens the playing field a little bit, right? It gives these smaller markets the same opportunity. And like Sean just said, it's these the, the richest guy is not necessarily just going to win and get the best player now and spend the most money. It's great for players. I saw Ryan Smith here yesterday, the owner of the Jazz. This makes draft picks even more valuable. And 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 I think it's a very, very good thing moving forward because it's again, it's 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 like the Yankees. They have the they could just sign whoever they want. This makes things a lot more even and, and I think it's a good thing. That was breaking news. Uh it, jazz and Cabo. Thank good, thank you, Chandler. That was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie. Yeah, one, 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 one result of this is we're, we're hurting the middle class a little bit. We're hurting those MLE guys, those guys who could have cashed in for seven, eight, nine million dollars and to play on a contender. That's not there for them. Now they're going to be in a situation where they can go get that MLE on a worse team or a lower spending team, or they can take a minimum if they want to win, if they want to compete, if they want to win. So you're going to look at a lot of guys on that level who look, the teams, they know what's going on. So they're not going to just willingly pay them more money than they would have. Yo, you're either going to take this minimum, or we have an extra two-way. We're going to we're going to hope we strike big on a second on a second round pick or a two-way guy or whatever. So you remove that a little bit, but I do appreciate that we're making it more difficult for teams to sustain dominance. That should be the point here. We want as much parity as we can. Look at how much fun we've been having with the Western Conference this season and the jumbled second half of of the standings. That's what we want league-wide. Now, when you look at the, the highest payrolls in the league, you are looking at a lot of the contenders. And then the Oklahoma City Thunder at 10. So, look, small market teams aren't not spending money. They are. But this is what we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to find that parity. We're trying to find, we're trying to not let Steve Ballmer buy a title in perpetuity because he's Steve <laughs> Ballmer. And in that sense, it works. I just feel for those mid-level guys and the contracts they're going to be losing out on. But... They've also instilled other ways for them to make money, which Shams, I'm sure, will talk about. And those guys can make ends meet. Uh, yeah, he is about to talk about that because we've, we've talked about this next one for a while. Uh, and you're either for it or against it, Shams. Is the midseason tournament happening? Yeah, the in season tournament is happening. November, December, uh, they're going to play games. It'll be regular season games that are going to be basically hyped up and, and heightened as, as, as in season tournament games. So I think. When you look at the longer term, this is going to be an opportunity when you think about media rights for, for the league to potentially stream some of these games. Does an Amazon, um, does an Apple, do, does someone buy into the in-season tournament? But it's just raising the stakes of games that already existed. And the two teams that face off in the finals, I believe, will play an 83rd game as well. Uh, but overall, this is a process that has been in the works for the last two years. $500,000 per player on the winning team. Is that enough to, to satisfy the appetite you think of players, Chandler? I'm curious. Oh, it depends on the level of player. If I'm one of these two-way guys, yeah, I love that. Especially I'm not even playing in these games and I can just put up 500 grand on my bonus. I, I would love it. It's just, especially if these, these games don't mean more, it still counts against your record and playoff seating and to ultimately get into the playoffs and win a championship. I don't think it really matters that much. I don't think guys are gonna take the game more seriously for the for the half a million dollars. But again, like like the, how everything is so congested now and kind of gives a little, you know, a little spiciness to the middle of the season. Sure. Uh, will I like tune in and watch every game like it's the playoffs? No, but I it's it's fun and it's different and why not try? I, I was skeptical on the play and also so when it happened and yeah. now I love it. Brilliant. So maybe this will be the same. Yeah, I like it. It's like they're building on the idea of what the plan has turned into. By the way, Draymond, very active on the tweeter box there. Uh, the mil He would have preferred a million dollars. So to hell with the, the, the lower level guys, <laughs> as far as Draymond's concerned. 500,000 is not enough. I don't think this pertains to him necessarily. But Eddie, as a fan, 
uh, when we talk about this midseason tournament, does this get you excited at all? Uh, I mean, look, WNBA fans, they love the Commissioner's Cup. Soccer fans, they love all their midseason tournaments and stuff. Yeah. NBA fans can be sticklers, but I feel like at the end of the day, they're going to be games. They're going to be nice sponsored games that come in nice packages and fancy nicknames and all that, but they're going to be games. And I do love the idea of a one-off game worth, you know, a half a million dollars for everybody on the floor and, and seeing how that goes. And I also love the idea of like Theo Pinson at the end of the bench getting a free half meal because he's he's really cheering his guys on. Like, I, I don't know. I think the theater of that and if they do it on a neutral side and all this cool stuff, I, I think that could be great. <clears throat> it's going to be tough to convince fans that, like, this is championship adjacent or whatever. But I know for my arguments and all that, having some <laughs> – giving this to, to LeBron, again, something Michael Jordan can't win, that's going to make it funny oh, to argue about. And, I mean, we have oh, we have playing <laughs> MVPs. We have – like, we have all this weird stuff yeah, now. Yeah. And we gave away bubble awards. We're giving conference championship awards. Like, I guess. Like, whatever. Let's just do it. Yeah, will there, way, Sean, uh, will there be banners and will there be rings? Yeah, do and do, do coaches get any bonuses if, if they win? Like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure the coach, the coaches get, you know how it goes. They get playoff bonuses. So if players are getting five hundred thousand for for winning. The coaches will get bonuses too. I'll report back on that soon. Yes, yeah, and know. find out about broadcasters <laughs> if uh, broadcasters on lower level. <laughs> find out what we can do on that as well. And then finally, save the best for last, Shams. What's new as far as marijuana in the league? Yeah, no marijuana testing, no prohibitions, no. Really, this is a continuation of what happened and what started in 2019, 2020, the, the bubble season where they temporarily stopped testing, random testing for marijuana. Well, now it is totally out of the anti-drug program for the NBA under the new collective bargaining agreement. I think it's a way that the NBPA has told its players it's a way to um, liberate um, you guys in terms of the anti-drug policy as well. So. Yeah, no marijuana testing under the new CBA. It's officially official. Um, you know, I, I don't know how it'll impact games, but it's definitely, you know, very progressive for the league. Yeah. Yeah. Can we play high now? What's the deal, Chandler? Like, are they, there's no testing. What does this change anything? Yeah, look at my eyes right now. Thank God, Candles. <laughs> Uh, no, I, it's, it's, it's legal. Everybody smokes weed. It's, it's why would it be tested and frowned upon and shunned upon? It's just funny that the, the change of marijuana. Like back in the day, growing up, my parents wouldn't let me hang out with like the pothead, the stoner kids, and now it's like curing lives. <laughs> and live a healthier life. So it's, marijuana has made a more a more remarkable comeback to the Lakers this year. It really is great. <laughs> Eddie. Yeah, like like newsflash, they haven't been testing for a long, long, <laughs> long, long time. It just doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like you, you wouldn't know or not gonna know the difference. I look forward to like guys like endorsing weed. I look forward to guys just smoking yeah. freely. I look forward to all that because uh, your favorite NBA player probably smokes weed from time to time and 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 fairly often, more hey, likely. Hey, you know, so, you know, yeah. No way, Eddie. No way, you you're lying to me. How dare you, Eddie? When you you get like six failed marijuana tests too, so it's like you really got to fail like an offensive amount of times before, anyways, <laughs> before it's even public. So like, just stop testing. Yeah, it's, unless you're gonna test for wine, I think you should probably test uh, stop on that as well. Shams, that was a lot of information. Thank you so much. We will uh, we will chat early tomorrow morning, and we as a group will also take a quick break here. When we come back, a bunch of dudes with lots of family. Got embarrassed back, when we come back. Run it up, run it back, run it back, run it up, run it back. Well, you're looking at him. The probable number one pick in the next draft. This is ridiculous. A put back after <laughs> this three. Um, yeah, I don't even. Chandler, we're going to probably ask this question. Hold on. I have to make sure that I'm properly dressed for this next segment. I don't want to miss out on this. Have you seen this before? I, I don't think I have. This is crazy. This, first of all, he's shooting a step back. So he's going away from the rim as he pulls up. And obviously guys follow their own miss like this, but to catch this two feet, one hand outside the arch, this is, this is a video game. And this is why he's arguably the most intrigued prospect of all time. 
This isn't normal. This, it, this, this it's is not normal. I mean, it does enough. look it, like sometimes it looks like he's the only guy out there. Like, well, what's happening? Yeah, look, I don't know what this league is he's playing in, how what the competition level is. And, and the Twitter guys, they can keep telling me he only scored eight points. I don't care. <laughs> that dude shot a step back three and then rebounded his miss and tip dunked it in in the same motion. I don't care what happened in the rest of the game. Shut the rest of the game down. I've never seen that. I might not never see that again. So, I, when T-Mac threw the ball off the backboard on purpose and then went and dunked it, I lost my mind. This right here, it's not supposed to be possible. This is just ridiculous. I don't, I don't need to see more. If I was his agent, I would never let him bounce a basketball again until he's doing it in the NBA. Like, stop running around. It's over. Oh. <laughs> it's it's yeah this was all over the okay i just had to make sure i wanted to now that we're almost done with the season it's time to officially get into the spirit of what's to come so yeah it was just you know let's see more of those Wemby highlights as we keep this thing moving uh let's do a little batman has a family by the way i have no pull on what happens in the draft i'm just hoping for the best for everyone let's start with brandon ingram on norman Powell. Mm. Mm. there's not much yeah, more been scorching lately <laughs> A, a two foot, two hand dunk. Just he was. This this is tough. Oof. And he gave him like a little shove. I, I, my goodness, this is perfect. This is exactly what this That's this awesome. segment should be. That happening to somebody. Yeah, I yeah. like that one. It's disrespectful, but not in your face. Disrespectful, just enough. Uh, Bryce McGowan's on Rushovich. Oh. oh my goodness, sir. Got, gotta love April basketball, right? Like, who? I mean, who's this? Who's this? Wait, wait, to, who? who? <laughs> yeah, but you know what? The Hornets are playing just for fun. They're they're doing some stuff. Doesn't matter, they are. and it's for nothing. They're, they're enjoying being the spoiler alert. <laughs> just, <laughs> yeah, they are. They just, they just <laughs> David Roddy this. on Zubach. Oh. Okay, that's way, this, this dude needs to go to the NFL. He is so physical. <laughs> It's so strong, <laughs> and this was violent, and just another classic white guy getting banged on. Yo, yeah, I saw this like live. This, this is like the most perfect get your steps, get your feet right dunk I've seen in a long time. It just worked out perfect for him, and boom, like that's, that's ridiculous. Wait, does Zubac even jump at? I mean, what are you doing? It's, that's embarrassing. Yeah, <laughs> he barely moves. That's nasty. Come on, dude. Uh, I can't believe we have a Grayson Allen oh. moment. Oh. I don't know what to do with this. Happy he fell. I'm torn. Happy I'm Grayson happy Rock. he fell. I mean, that's pretty fast. <laughs> By the way, this also the kid on Denver. I don't know if we have him on here, but the Christian Braun kid, he has bounce too. No, we don't Yo, have him on here. No joke. Oh. He is no Grayson joke. Allen. I like you the, I like yeah, the Statue of Liberty, don't touch it with the other hand, go, I, I like this kind of duck. You can't let Grayson, Grayson and Allen do this to you. Grayson Ugh. and Jordan weren't in my uh, bingo card. <laughs> I agree with you. Uh, Lou Dort. Oh, I didn't know he had that. Ooh. He might not have either. Yeah. But here it is. It, it, it. He's another guy who probably should be rushing the quarterback, but he got the bag playing defense and doing stuff like this. So, whew. Marvin Can I Bagley, just say, what's like, up, dude? As a person with a pretty unsexy name myself, Lou Dort is not it, the best name in the league. It doesn't like, get it's, it's pretty unsexy. Um, there's nothing you can do. I mean, you could change it, but Lou Dort. But then you moments Arizona like this. Arizona State legend. Wow. <laughs> out. And Giannis. Why not? Oh, again, the two feet, two hand just shows me that Giannis knew he was going to dunk this ball and had zero fear of this kid. Hey, he just sort of looked at him Yo, too. So, disrespect. Sometimes the league just works like this. Like, like Jalen made a great read. He made it. He made a great contest. He actually blocked it and he just still got thrown to the floor and dunked on. Like that's what do you do at that point?
Yeah, that's just that's you're going up against one of the best. So that's that's going to happen. You did your best and you should go to sleep knowing that uh, that night. All right. We got a little Blazers uh, talking points right now. This is I feel like Eddie will like it. They beat the Wolves. They were 19 and a half point underdogs going into this one. Four starters for Portland didn't even play and they still managed to win by four. It's one of the biggest upsets against the spread since they started tracking those things back in the 90s. Um, look, the Wolves are heading into the playoffs here Chandler is this a bad omen I mean it's a bad loss overall considering that they weren't trying to lose this but it's 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 again it's game and you look at these guys in Portland this is their time to shine this is how they get you know and and to the coaches good they play hard and they have performances like this where going into the all you can look back at this game and you know say look at my impact look what I did here and so Teams trying to lose. It's so funny when you see tanking and all this stuff. These kids aren't just tanking. Teams are putting out guys that they think are going to lose. But these kids are trying to like, eat. They're trying to get their contracts. They're trying to play. And so it's funny to think that I wouldn't think of all the games. This game was the biggest. The fact that the Minnesota Timberwolves are ever a 19-point favorite is more shocking yeah. to me than, than they lost. That, that's kind yeah. of insane. Oh, sorry, Eddie. I'm like looking at that thinking, what? It, it was a really weird game. And maybe, like, examine the box score afterwards because uh, Carl Lee Towns only shot three shots. I'm like, what did I just watch right now? Anthony Edwards shot 30 shots. I don't know if there's a thing there or whatever, but that's a game you absolutely can't lose. After they gave up and collapsed uh, against the Lakers as well, they collapsed against the Suns as well. And it's like, yo, this was a team who could have been out of the play and who could have had the five or six seed. And just last week, we're like, man, they're impressive after they beat the Warriors. And then they put up a couple stinkers and it's like, oh, I guess they're still the Wolves and I can still make Rudy Gobert jokes. But yeah, ugly, ugly loss. I don't know if it's an omen, but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's one of those, oh, I guess they are what we thought they were. And now we don't have to think so hard about them going into the playoffs. And, and now I'm wondering, can they win a play-in game? Like, are they even that trustworthy? And that was just after last week saying, hey, man, they might beat the Grizzlies if they play them. So you hate to see that. Uh, this league is fun, isn't it? Well, they, they do lose Nas Reed out for six weeks um, with the broken wrist, Chandler. So as far as losses for the Timberwolves, how big is that one? I mean, it's huge just because they are playing for something and they are in the play and And Nas Reed's had an unbelievable year. Thank God it's nothing serious, but, you know, it's almost good for Nas Reed. Like, you've done unbelievable. You've had a great yep. year. You set yourself, <laughs> up, right? set yourself up for a huge payday. Let's say they do get into the playoffs and he has an awful series. That's just going to hurt his strike value this summer. So, con honestly, congrats, man. Like, heal your wrist. Bones are going to heal, and you are going to be a lot richer come training camp. Nice. Yeah, I was at that game. Nas tried to catch a serious body and ended up, you know, getting hurt on the fall. I don't want to say he even mouthed his teammates. So, yo, I think it's broke. Finished mm. the game. Finished the stretch. Made a free throw. Uh, so, shout out to him. But I'm with Chandler. Go get that bag, big fella. Don't, don't worry about what's going on over here. It's a lot of money waiting for you in the summer. Go get that bag. That was a nice lesson in teamwork, you guys. I'm really happy that you're telling the kids <laughs> how to do all that. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break here. We don't have a lot of parlays, none actually, but when we come back, Chandler with his national title game fix. When Run It Back returns. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it over, run it back. Well, our last parlay was uh, Wednesday, long, long time ago, but uh, no, no reason not to celebrate, right guys? Anybody wanna speak for themselves before I brag or? I mean, <laughs> finally, Suns, Suns covering the spread is, you know, it's like a win in life for me. So I hedged myself, I guess. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I feel like because mine was such a big point spread and I got it, I should get three wins for that. But apparently that's not how these things work. And that's fine. We'll take it. Uh, look, no, no. I mean, that's not, I don't get many, very many of these. It feels pretty nice. There are no NBA games tonight. That's a good reason because now we all get to concentrate on the men's college basketball national championship game. UConn seven and a half point uh, favorites going into this one against San Diego State. They have won, by the way, by an average of about 20 points so far, Chandler. But who do you take in? I'm all over UConn. I think they're the best team that was left in the Final Four. They looked unbelievable against Miami. San Diego State probably lost that game against FAU. They hit the buzzer beater. But it's been so fun, and I think UConn, I think they cover the spread. The money line I would, I'm going to take, but I think they still cover seven and a half. Any shot, Eddie? Any shot for a fun upset? I got, 
I got San Diego, West Coast. Uh, please don't bring the rest from last <laughs> night, though. Anything but those rest from last night. I just want a good game, not a 20-point blowout. But that's going to do it for us. We'll see you all bright and early tomorrow. Have a good one. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up.